Can you imagine that ping pong has the power to change the world? Well, it did, folks. 50 years ago, at the height of the Cold War, the US and China managed to normalize their relations in what President Nixon described as the week that changed the world, and what his Chinese counterpart regarded as the most effective use of sport as a tool of international diplomacy. So today, in this episode of Spolitics, we will be revisiting US-China ping pong diplomacy. And now, before we go on, subscribe, people. You know, like, comment, share. I said it in the beginning of the video, so I don't have to say it in the end. It all started in 1971 during the World Table Tennis Championships in Nagoya, Japan. Glenn Cowan, a member of the American team, jumped onto a shuttle bus carrying the Chinese national team to greet them. The Chinese were wary of any contact with the Americans, given the state of the two countries' relations. But Zhuang Zedong, a Chinese ping pong superstar, stepped up to shake Cowan's hand. He engaged in a short conversation and presented him with a small scroll. To reciprocate the kind gesture, Cowan presented Zhuang with a t-shirt that had a peace symbol on it and the words from the famous Beatles song, Let It Be. News of this sporting camaraderie caused shockwaves around the world, with great anticipation as to what this could possibly mean for US-China relations. Chinese leader Mao Zedong seized the opportunity after this heartwarming moment and invited the American team to visit China on their way home. They did, and they stayed 10 days, sightseeing and taking part in exhibition games, and were even invited to an audience with Chinese premier Zhu Enlai. Of course, if you are wondering who won, well, you've missed the point, and let's be honest. We all know who won. In 1967, US President Nixon had written, we simply cannot afford to leave China forever outside the family of nations. Indeed, after the ping pong team's visit, his administration got to work. Henry Kissinger visited China in July 1971, and in February 1972, Nixon became the first US president to visit mainland China. Normalization had begun, and it was televised. Nixon relaxed travel restrictions to China, and so a few Americans also had a chance to visit the Far East. But still, China was very distant from the average American's mind, and there was a real interest and need for cross-cultural exchange. And so, another round of ping-pong diplomacy started. This time, it was the Chinese team embarking on a US tour in April 1972. It was a huge success. Everyday Americans, students, children, and athletes got to meet the 13-man Chinese team. The US and China had previously met on the battleground during the Korean War. There were negative feelings with regards to issues such as Taiwan, and China's cultural revolution had fostered a lot of anti-American sentiment. But a couple of ping pong strokes were slowly withering all the negativity away, and cooperation on a political, economic, and cultural front was on the way. I'm also guessing this is how we got rush hour, so I'd like us to take a moment and thank ping pong for that. Now, what really caught my attention in this story were remarks made by Robert Hormatz, one of Henry Kissinger's former economic advisors, who witnessed this whole diplomatic breakthrough firsthand. He described how the Chinese players even let him win a couple of points in table tennis so that he wouldn't be completely humiliated. A gesture of respect, if you will. But there was also another message there that was conveyed to him by Chinese officials, which is that China was very talented in many fields, some more than Americans, and that their success should not be held against them or scare the US. Instead, they should be embraced under the umbrella of cooperation and respect. And the last half century has seen China develop and become a powerhouse in science, technology, the military, and economy. China still uses ping pong as a tool of diplomacy, particularly in the South Pacific. But unfortunately, tension has returned to its relationship with the US. Global trade, Hong Kong, Taiwan, the COVID-19 pandemic are just some of the issues reigniting US-China hostility once more. Perhaps this time, these issues cannot be solved by ping pong, but the lessons of this important chapter should be revisited as a reminder of how people, culture, and sport can sometimes be the best way to make us realize that mutual cooperation is better than mutual suspicion. Somebody said world peace was in our hands, but all I did was play ping pong. Thank you, baby. US China, you know, get together, play ping pong, or whatever you play, man. You know, love each other, peace be upon you. The sun is out, mark, baby. 